Hey everyone, I'm Kristen Brown, curl specialist and colorist, and I'm here with Kendra Professional today to show you how I'm gonna be using Simply Blonde Blue Powder Lightener to get these curls lighter, brighter, while keeping the integrity. So without further ado, let's get started. So before we get started in the actual lightening process, I'm gonna show you all how I actually section out my clients before we really get into things. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is section out my client Max hair. So what I'm gonna do is kinda of have a nice section like this. I'm gonna do a half turn at the base, twist it over, and I'm gonna take this clip and go ahead and clip that firmly to the head. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop my next section, and this is where the fun begins. I'm relatively taking about the same size, not too big, not too small, definitely more bite size. I'm gonna go ahead and do another half turn. And then with another clip, I'm gonna go ahead and clip that to the previous section. This makes it a lot easier. So that way when I'm down to my very last panel that I'm dropping, when I start doing color, I can easily take out the clip, drop another section, take out the clip, drop another section. It saves time, it really keeps you in the groove of painting, so I'll show you guys all that after I'm done sectioning my client's hair. So another great tool that I like to use is kind of like this bib right here. This makes it so that way you can really be the artist that you want without having the mess on the cape. I like to keep my capes very, very clean. So um, you will definitely see how I will utilize this, especially in these longer sections when it's definitely gonna touch the other cape. So in today's formula, I'm using the Simply Blonde Blue Powder Lightener. And I went ahead and mixed that thoroughly with 20 volume developer. Now. A lot of you would think, okay, well, can't you use 30 volume or 40 volume? My theory is to go with the low and slow method. When it comes to curls, you absolutely wanna take your time. You don't really wanna force the hair to do something that it doesn't wanna do. That's how you risk the integrity. You risk their curls not popping up the way that they used to. So I'm going with the low and slow method of the 20 volume developer here. I also like to use a brush like this that definitely has a lot more saturation. When it comes to curly hair, the worst thing you can do is not fully saturate your curls enough. That leaves like little spots in the hair and that's what we wanna avoid. So instead of also using a palette, I'm just gonna use my hand as my, my palette essentially. So I'm gonna use this. Make sure your gloves are nice and tight. Avoid your fingers so that way you're not having to constantly wipe your hands clean. That'll just make it again, just really nice and fast for application. For our overall look, I definitely want to get my client nice and blonde. So you really have to think about how this is going to look on curls. Curls definitely need to be illustrated. They need to be high lit in order for you to really see the true definition. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is take a little swipe like this, put it on my nice little paintbrush here. I'm going to have a little bit more tension right here in this zone, and I'm simply just going to guide it along the side of my client's hair. I'm then going to use my flat palm to kiss that curl right there so it stays put. And I'm gonna drag that right along through the end. And let that sit right on that cape that we were talking about. You can go with a single curl. Let's say you love this one curl in particular and you're like, oh yeah, let's highlight that. Great. You can go ahead and do the same exact thing. Kiss it along the side, drag it, put it right in the palm, and bring that all the way bottom. So for this row in particular, that's exactly what I'm going to do. You can take wider sections as well. So let's say I have more of a balayage style section which kind of comes to a V. I'll show you what you can do with that. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna kiss the outside section. And then I'm also gonna kiss the other side. Come down the middle, kiss it right in the middle there. And bring it all the way. So in that case, you're kind of getting two separate highlights in the, same, in the same paneling, which can also save you time. And remember, you definitely still need a little bit of that depth, so that way it makes the highlights pop even more. If you're just going for a full blonding, sometimes you can lose a little bit of that dimension. In this case, I'm definitely going to keep a nice amount of dimension, so that way the grow out process just looks absolutely flawless and it looks beautiful. So let's kind of bust through this so that way we can really use the full power of this lightener. And there you have it. First section done, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the other section. Again, this is goes to show that my fingertips have remained very, very clean. So that way when you're dropping that next section, you don't have to worry about wiping your hands again, all right? So let's drop this down. 
and there we go. Now, if it makes you feel a little bit more comfortable to place cotton in between, if you're concerned about bleeding, go for it. You could do a nice little strip of cotton right there and that's fine. With a texture like my client's hair, you don't really have to worry about that because the underside really isn't kissing the what we has been previously painted. So I've got my second section down. I'm gonna go ahead and swipe in the middle of my palm once again. Get it as close to the scalp. Put it right in the middle. I'm gonna drag it all the way through. And again, this is just gonna give that overall blonding effect, which is exactly what we're going for. While also making sure that we can see, kind of like looking into the future, where you're like, okay, that's gonna look like a great curl after I'm done with this piece. So really have fun with it. This is a great technique for type 4C curls, which are like mine, which are a lot tighter. For looser curls, even on my wavy clients, I do the same technique. But the best part about it is the grow out. If you have a client who's not able to come in as often as we'd like for them to, then it's fine. The grow out is really, really nice. I've seen clients a year later, I've seen them six months later, I've seen them also three months later. And the great thing is that it's versatile in a sense where you're giving them the option when they wanna come back in, you're not forcing them to come back in in about six to eight weeks. So again, once more, kissing the outside, placing it right in the middle, dragging it down. On this back section, I'm definitely gonna take a wider, more of a V shape. So that way I'm keeping the dimension on this back side. So right now I have only two sections left. So this would be a good time to check your body. I think the one thing that we need to constantly be aware of is how our body is positioned, especially when we're doing a color project like this, it's gonna be for a nice amount of time. So if you need to have your client kind of cheat toward you, that's okay. That's what the head is meant to do, it's meant to rotate. Now, a lot of clients, and I think we can all agree that we like to see most of our lightness around the face. So if this means that you've been painting for about 30 minutes, make sure that either yourself or your assistant can go in the back and mix up a new batch of lightener for you. What you don't wanna have happen is you start to lose the power on your lightener. So if they have to mix up a fresh batch, then go ahead and go for that. We definitely wanna keep that light, bright pop right around the face. It's not every day that our client gets to see themselves 360, but we do. Again, we're still keeping our fingers nice and clean. This keeps us nimble. This keeps us from having to wipe our hands off on a towel every couple of seconds. Now we don't think that that wastes time, but it really does. This would also be a great time to kind of like look and see almost the picture like a photograph. So wherever we have the lightener is where we're gonna see that most, the most pop. So really make sure that we're kind of, I like to squint, surprisingly, that's my thing, is kind of squint and to see how these highlights are gonna look. The darkness is definitely gonna create that dimension that we need. So remember, if, it's, if everything is not fully painted, that is okay. As long as you can see the vision, that's the most important part, right? So this might be the first time where I actually would go ahead and take a towel and to wipe off your hand. The reason for that is because you're now gonna go ahead and section out your other side. Now, what a couple of people do, and I do this as well, is you can pre-section both sides and that's fine. For the sake of conversation, go ahead and wipe your hand completely clean so that way you can get nice clean sections without smacking the head with a handful of lightener, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do my first clean section up here at the top. Remember again, just to reiterate, we're keeping it nice and thin. One thing to also be mindful of is definitely make sure that you're not clipping this first section to your top section that has already been previously lightened. So go ahead and do a half turn. And then because I have not yet done anything on this back area, what you can do is kind of over direct backwards and clip it back this way. As long as it is clean and out of the way this way, it goes straight back. That still should be pretty easy for you to go ahead and so that you're not working on top of yourself. So right now I'm sectioning out my very last panel before starting. So again, making sure that these guys are out of the way. You can really see that I have like those nice rows going on, 
but making sure again that it is completely out of your way so that way you're not working on top of yourself. So that's the worst thing you can do. Take a nice little swipe here. I'm gonna start around the face. Drop my first little section here. If you have to do it in a couple swipes, that is completely fine. Place it right there once again, and I'm gonna drag it right on down. Also be mindful of the ear area. If you have somebody who has sensitive skin, you can always put something down right on top of their ear if you're concerned about the lightener touching that area. Like I said, sometimes you're gonna highlight on the outside of the curl. Sometimes you're gonna highlight maybe on the inside of it, depending on what you do, have fun with it. This is the best part about curly hair is you can really be as creative as you can be and know that when it all curls up, it's just gonna look absolutely phenomenal. And this is why your client is gonna continue to come back to you is because you highlight their hair a little bit differently. Another trick that I like to do with highlighting is being selective where you place it. So for example, this highlight, I brought it right all the way up, pretty much just off the scalp for something that is gonna be really nice when it grows out. Now, let's say I have a client in my chair and I know they're not gonna see me for a nice few months, maybe even a year. Maybe that would be the time where I would place the highlight a little bit lower off the scalp, a little bit farther away. So that way, as their hair grows out, it's not all growing out at the same length. Your client will definitely appreciate the fact that their color is a lot more lived in, that they can work with it more. Maybe they even like their color the more their hair grows out, the more the months go by. So give some variation. The worst thing is when you see the client's hair growing out and it's all at one length. In that case, you might as well have foiled the hair and then they're gonna have to come back in pretty soon. But the whole name of the game with this is to make it look almost as if they just spent a ton of time at the beach. So a big tip that I'm gonna go ahead and throw out there is if you have a client who has more hair on one side versus maybe a little bit less on the other, see what side is going to be the fastest for you. So if that means that starting on their side of the head that has the least amount of hair means you're gonna go ahead and breeze through it, great, go ahead and do that. What I would do is definitely cheat your lightener to developer so that way it reflects still that low and slow method. So for example, if you're starting on the side of the head that you know you're gonna breeze through, still make sure that you have a lower volume developer with that formula. That way you're not racing against the clock, that way you're not having to stop and rinse them out of the bowl. You can always bump up your developer and your lightener ratio later on as you get a little bit faster but make sure that you're definitely starting with the lowest possible developer scenario so that way it just gives you time no matter how fast you are. So right now I have about two sections left and if you have not already bumped up your lightener and developer ratio, now is a good time to do it. So I actually went ahead and speeded this up a little bit to about a uh, it went from 20 volume with lightener, now we're at a 30 volume. The reason for that is we're kind of playing catch up now. So we're still going off the low and slow method. I would not go any higher than 30 volume. And then I'm going to carefully drop my section. Again, we're not gonna go ahead and smash this right onto the previously lightened hair. You just kind of want it to lay right there. So this would be a good time to have my client tilt toward me just a little bit. Right there is good. and I'm gonna go ahead and lighten around the face. Again, remind yourself of how this is gonna look in the, in the end. We want that nice grow out. We want some pieces to be right up there at the scalp, some a little bit off the scalp. This is gonna make it so that way when it is time for them to come in for a touch up, they're still loving the way it grows out. Sometimes you'll have a client that doesn't even know that they need one because they love the way it looks so much. 
All right, so we are down to the very end, the last section. Now, some clients have just as much hair in the back as they did on either side. So you still wanna make sure that your partings are very, very clean, as thin as you can take them, because again, it really does make a huge difference. Make sure that wherever you place that first piece that we're sectioning, that again, you are now mindful of both the right side as well as the left side. So what you can do is you can kind of start a little base. So I'm gonna take this first section up here, and what you can do is you can kind of twist it on itself and lay it right in the middle. So if you tilt back a little bit, you can see that I have just this section right here, this little triangle wedge. And then what I'm gonna do is leave the tip kind of out, and I'm just gonna run it right down the middle where there is no lightener. Okay, that's gonna now be used as your anchor to then clip everything to that section. So I'm gonna start my second little section here. Again, making sure that it's not more than what we can easily digest. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring this on up and just find a spot. It's gonna be different on every head of hair, but I'm gonna see if I can just go ahead and clip that right there. It's perfect because it actually lays right on a landing strip where there is no lightener, so I'm safe. So with starting in the back, I definitely still wanna paint just as heavy as I did on the left and on the right side. But what you can do is kinda of make your pieces a little bit bigger. We don't have to make them as small because naturally, where the sun hits, it really isn't underneath, right? So I'm gonna take it more of a balayage style approach of having this awesome V sectioning right here. I'm gonna paint one big piece on the inside one nice piece right on the outside. You can kind of feather up for a little bit more dimension there. And then I'm still gonna paint all the way down. And then as you work up the head, you can add a lot more blonding. There will still be that nice amount of dimension. But the idea is that you're not spending as much time on the detail work. And one thing that I will do is kind of go in between the depth as well. So maybe you notice like on the outside, maybe there's not as much dimension. That's okay. Go ahead and start to create that right now. So again, I'm gonna go with a highlight on the outside of this, highlight on the inside of this, feather my way up, drop it right down as like my glue placement, and then do something in the middle of that. So that way, again, we're keeping the dimension and we're keeping detail. But we're also making sure that it looks cohesive. So if you can imagine what the end result is gonna look like, again, try to keep that in the forefront of your mind so that way it keeps you on task. And so in the end, you'll see essentially everything looking just like we did on the left side, just like we did on the right side. And we'll show you what that looks like as we get closer to the top. So around this section, which again is the parietal ridge, is where I would really start to amp up the detail as far as taking those smaller sections. The reason for that is this is where a lot of the brightness will sit. So even though there's dimension down here, we definitely want it for it to start to be really, really bright up here. So I have two sections left to go, so we're almost there, this is the home stretch. And literally after I lay these two down, I still want them again to be just as painted as the previous sections. I'm gonna go ahead and let my client process for about 45 minutes. All right guys, so we have the right side processing, the left side, and we also fully did the back. So now we're gonna let the hair process for about 45 minutes to make sure that we're getting ultimate brightness. Hey guys, okay, so how do you like the final product, right? We're nice, we're bright, 
Her curls still have the integrity that we needed for them to have. One thing that I need to really stress is don't be afraid to do toning in certain spots. Some people think that you can just do an overall tone and that's fine and all, but you really do wanna make sure that you're toning for a specific reason. In this case, we knew that her hair was a lot more porous in some areas outside of others. So what we went ahead and did was we dropped one formula that was a little bit deeper, a little bit richer on her root. Then I kind of smudged that out after I did all her roots all over her whole head. And then I went ahead and did a second formula that was a little bit different, a little bit more of a violet tone in the middle. That way we had a nice controlled kind of golden situation going on. So here's the finished product. I love it. Max, you love it? I love it. All right, awesome. <laughs> so that's the biggest thing that I can give you and have fun with it. Be an artist. Don't be afraid of curly hair, just embrace it the way that we do and I'm sure that you'll have a really great result like this. So thank you so much for tuning in and hope to see you soon.